Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Pipistrelle releases a new airplane just for the great race, Airlander 10 prototype will not be rebuilt, and the last batch of Iridium Next satellites are in orbit. Welcome to your Friday edition of Airborne Unlimited, I'm Skylar Vanell. Back in 1919, the Great Race was the first international flight from Australia to the United Kingdom. This year marks the 100th year anniversary of that event. The 18,000 mile journey will be completed in an electric hybrid type or similar aircraft, where they will be flying a new model that is fine-tuned for this event. Of those, the new Pipistrelle Adventurer aircraft is a limited edition model. As of December, there were 20 entries from the UK, Europe, USA, Canada, and Australia. The aircraft will be ready in October, just in time for the November race. A series of test runs are planned to make sure each aircraft is ready at the Pipistrelle factories in Italy and Slovenia. All competitors will fly from the Pipistrelle factory to the starting point in the UK for the pre-race celebrations. When we come back, a Canadian filmmaker says new drone regulations will close his business as we take you around the patch. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115-horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. Alan Ald, a Canadian filmmaker, says the new drone regulations in Canada may cost him his business. Ald owns Imagine Films based in Thunder Bay, and the filmmaker said it will make it very expensive to do aerial work in that city, potentially grounding operations. Once the new regs go in effect, he will need to upgrade to a UAV-compliant aircraft, and that could cost up to $40,000 Canadian dollars, which is more than he can afford. The new rules will go in effect on June 1st. You may have heard of the Engineered Materials Arresting Systems, and the FAA has installed about 500 of these around the country. The first system in the state of Georgia was installed at the DeKalb Peach Tree Airport in Atlanta. EMAS technology can prevent an aircraft from running off the end of a runway. It works by using lightweight materials designed to reduce the speed of the aircraft. It is used in areas where the land is not available to make a longer runway. BRS Aerospace has named Hong Kong-based International Aviation Equipment and Investment as a distributor for the People's Republic of China. The company will represent BRS in a non-exclusive distributor of products. Those products include promoting, marketing, and selling the company's ballistic whole aircraft parachute recovery system throughout China. They have also given them exclusivity of non-imported trike ultralights and powered paragliders with suspended trike-type fuselages. BRS has the only FAA and EASA certified aircraft parachute systems for the Cessna 172 and 182. VSC Aviation acquired First Choice Aerospace. The merger of the two privately owned aviation supply chain management companies both have operations in Florida and Kentucky. They provide component maintenance, repair and overhaul services and products for new generation and legacy commercial aircraft. The purchase price was a whopping $112 million in cash. And that wraps up today's trip around the patch. After the break, the end of the Airlander 10 and Iridium Next satellites are launched. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. 
The dream is real. A truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics personal jet kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit plus engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Hybrid Air Vehicles will not be rebuilding the prototype Airlander 10 airship. This decision was made after they had two incidents in six flights. Back in 2016, the 300-foot-long aircraft was slightly damaged on its second flight when it bumped into the ground during an attempt to land. Then in 2017, the hull of the prototype automatically deflated when it came loose from its moorings, sending an employee of the company to the hospital. The aircraft was designed to deflate and the damage was very significant. This led the company to drop its plans to use the prototype as a test and sales model. The company will focus on the development of a production-ready type aircraft. This comes after the grant of production organization approval from the CAA. HAV says the POA places it in a strong position to launch production and it hopes to have a new airlander flying in the early 2020s. The prototype did what it was supposed to do and it gave them the data that will help them in the future development of the production aircraft. And our final story today, the last batch of Radium Next satellites was launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. This is the eighth launch and the fleet is now fully deployed to low Earth orbit. The operational constellation is made up of 66 satellites at about 500 miles up. It's set up in six orbital planes with each containing 11 satellites, plus nine spare satellites in a parking orbit with six more ground spares. Now that it is in the orbit, it features global coverage and independence from the ground. Each satellite is linked to the four closest satellites in front, behind, to the left, and to the right. And no matter where users are on Earth, they will always be in the line of sight of at least one. So what does that mean for users? It means you can always establish a connection. This type of direct satellite access provides communication capabilities at any given moment. It also ensures secure communications with protection against intrusion and privacy. Well, that's all we have for you today, and we hope you enjoyed our program. If you have a story suggestion, do send us an email at news-spy at arrow-news.net. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you right back here on Monday for more Airborne Unlimited.